All right, talk about uh, politics, uh, the politics of the day. Uh, Kamala Harris seems to be doing phenomenally well in the polls. Uh, she now has a lead on Trump, depending on the polls you look at. Certainly in the big Midwestern states uh, and, and, and Pennsylvania, so Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and, uh, and Michigan, these are the states that she has to win if she is going to win the presidency. Uh, she seems to be leading in all four states, all three states by four percentage points, which is the best showing um, Democrats have had in a very long time. Now, it is true that polls, at least in 2016 and 2020, underestimated um, Trump's, Trump's numbers. So that four percentage point lead might not be real. It's, it's, it's hard to tell. But just a few weeks ago, Trump was leading in all those states, was leading uh, Biden in all those states. Uh, Kamala is also seems to be uh, winning and uh, doing well in Nevada and even Arizona and Georgia. And uh, North Carolina might flip blue. That would be pretty amazing. But they do have a very popular Democratic governor. And uh, the demographics in that state are shifting, um, are shifting. So it is hard, you know, it's, it's, it looks, it does look like, right? Um, it does look like um, the, she has real momentum. I, I think pos partially it's that she's not Trump, but of course Biden was not Trump and he didn't have this. Um, I, I really do think that it's about youth and energy. It's about um, not, you know, not the old God. Uh, it's not about ideas because she's making a real effort, I mean a real effort, not to talk about ideas. Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, we will see. Uh, you, you, you know, Ian says, in 2022, everybody overestimated Republicans. That's true. But we're talking about presidential campaigns and presidential elections 2016 and 2020 underestimated uh, Trump's appeal <clears throat> significantly. And... Um, I don't know what it's going to be. I mean, uh, good pollsters adjust for that. They, they figure out what they got wrong last time and they adjust for it. Uh, so we'll see. But certainly the momentum seems to be right now with Kamala. I think Trump is panicking a little bit as a consequence. And, uh, and, and Kamala seems like the energetic one. Again, Trump is running about as bad of a campaign as you could imagine. I, I don't think... I mean, in 2016... As awful as Trump is, he ran what was a, a brilliant campaign. I mean, he was on message in terms of what his message was. It was a message of lies and distortions and, and perversions. But he, 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 he got on message and he kept repeating it and he, and he stuck to it. And it was overall a message that resonated with the American people. It was, I've said this many, many times, it was the life sucks in America right now. Uh, you know, there's crime, there's, there's all this awful things going on, the economy is going to hell, even though none of that was true. It doesn't matter. He, he convinced the American people, and I think a lot of people felt that coming out of the Tea Party movement. People felt like, yeah, America was in decline, everything was bad, everything was horrible, we were going to hell. And, and, he, said, and he said, yeah, I mean, and it's not you. You guys are great you guys are the people who make America great. It's the Chinese, and it's immigrants, and it's the elites. And, you know, there's only one person in the world who knows how to deal with this. I'm not going to tell you exactly how I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to dry the swamp, whatever that means. But the only person in the world who can deal with all this stuff, with the Chinese and with the immigrants and with the elites and with the others who you should be afraid of because they're causing all this mayhem and, and destruction in America, is me. And that is a brilliant formula. It's a formula that authoritarians have used for decades and decades and decades. Uh, populists have used. And it worked. And he couldn't run on that in 2020. 
because in 2020, he was the president. <laughs> so he couldn't say the world sucked. So I think to a large extent, that's why he lost. But in 2016, he was unbelievably disciplined on that formula, and that formula won it for him. It, it might have been Bannon. Bannon ran his campaign. I, I wouldn't be surprised um, if, if that is, um, that is uh, who came up with this formula. It really is brilliant. But he's not doing that today. What's he running on today? He's, he's kind of running on things awful, terrible, absolutely. Um, he blames Biden and he blames the Democrats and he blames uh, immigration, but it's very, um, what do you call it? It's very unfocused. And his argument is, I did it before, I fixed it before, I fixed it again, but nobody's completely convinced he fixed it last time because, hey, he lost and, and Biden's around, so how... How big of a fix could it have been if we're back to where we were before? And he's just not a message. He doesn't even talk that much about those things. He's, he's so busy complaining about the size of Kamala Harris's uh, you know, uh, uh, turnout in her rallies, or he, he's too busy complaining about um, uh, he, he, you know, all the criminals coming from El Salvador, and the criminals in El Salvador are all in jails. So they're not coming to the United States. Or he's, so he's making stuff up that is just absurd and ridiculous, and then he's too busy complaining about the 2020 elections. He's too busy with trivialities and unimportant stuff. He's too busy with, with his own grievances. He's too busy whining. In 2016, he actually ran, I don't know if discipline is the right word, but he actually ran a clear message. It was clear what this was about. All wrong, but still clear. This time, I, I, I think people are just sick of it. He, he just whines, he complains, and, and, and people don't want it. So, I, I, I don't know how this election is going to turn out. It's, it looks like it's going to be very close. But right now, Kamala has the momentum, and it does seem like Trump is panicking, that Trump is panicking. I think he's, you know, he's, he's eight years older. He's 78 and, and God, I mean, it, these are the ages where you deteriorate. I mean, we saw that with Biden, clearly. But for everybody, I, I just don't think a 78-year-old is, is just as sharp and as focused and as, as a 70-year-old. As a, as a and that is particularly the case. Andrew will like this. This particular case, when you're a horrible human being with a, 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 a you know, no self-esteem and a, and a mushy mind, uh, which, which is what Trump is. So uh, it's not surprising that, uh, he, he, you know, he has deteriorated between the age of 70 and 78. All right. Uh, let us see. Um, I mean, he was confident with Biden as the nominee because it was so self-evident, it was so obvious that Biden was just in such bad shape that all Trump had to do was show up, was have some energy, be able to string a sentence together, and he would win. Uh, Biden was, was this just ridiculous target, but... It's not the case with Kamala, and not that she's intelligent, not that she's smart, not that she has anything, but she's not about, she's not senile. She's not, she's not, she can't be ridiculed for that on a daily basis. Now, he could, and this is the point I've made a couple of times now, the last couple of days, he could focus on what's bad about her, her ideas, her policies. And he could just hammer away at those. But for that, he would have to be, again, disciplined. He would have to care. He would, and he would have to be energized around the issues rather than energized around grievances. So Trump today is not the Trump of eight years ago. He was bad then. He's worse now. 
and he's he's a much worse campaigner now. Much worse campaigner now. 